Joining me now is Natalie Bubella, the CEO for Muskoka Algonquin Healthcare. Natalie, thanks very much for taking the time today. My pleasure. Uh, Natalie, things are changing pretty rapidly uh, once again with the COVID restrictions and regulations. And we wanted to check in with what's happening with the two hospital sites in Muskoka. Um, first of all, I guess in terms of what's happening with capacity, because we're hearing a lot about capacity. It's mostly in Toronto, as we understand, but I uh, wanted to know what's happening with, with capacity in our two sites as well. Well, our capacity has sort of been up and down over the month of March, but I can tell you today that at the Huntsville site, we're at 100% capacity, and at the Bracebridge site, we're at 107% capacity, um, and we do have uh, patients in both of our ICUs. None of that capacity at this point is related to COVID-19. Uh, it would be uh, other reasons for admission to the hospital. Okay. So... Uh, just jumping into that, Natalie, um, and I had asked this question before, and I think, you know, this has been sort of widely reported. People are getting moved around uh, because of higher capacities in the south. And I'm wondering what the ability is and uh, honestly the openness is, I guess, of our hospitals taking in COVID patients to ease pressure on other hospitals to the south of us. Well, we're absolutely here to help our peers and, and, and our partners to the south of us. And in fact, I was on calls over the weekend to, to begin preparing for the eventuality that people are going to be transferred up here to both of our sites. So we do have capacity and we do have a surge plan in place. And I think our public can rest assured that we will be able to continue to manage our normal operations as well as support um, any demand or uh, requests that we get from Ontario Health and our peer hospitals to help them out. And just to, I guess, put minds at ease, Natalie, if you can kind of tell me what the setup is like, because, you know, it's not COVID patients mixing in with regular patients. You obviously have from some very strict regulations in, in the hospital sites to make sure that they are separated from the general population. Yes, we do separate uh, any patient that would be in the hospital that would be uh, identified as being a COVID-19 positive patient. So we have developed some wards. We also have all patients uh, under isolation, strict isolation, as well as negative pressure available to us uh, if we had patients that required uh, that particular technology. So I think the public can rest assured that the hospital is very safe if they were to come into our emergency department. And I would actually encourage that. So if people are sick, please don't hesitate to come to the hospital um, and to rest assured that we do separate people. In fact, any admission that comes into hospital today at either of our sites is automatically put into isolation and tested and not removed from isolation until a negative result comes back. Um, and just my, my last question on, on how those procedures work, um, you know, currently we have uh, reportedly one person in hospital from Muskoka right now, but um, if these patients do get moved from the south up here, um, would those numbers be reported to the health unit as a in-hospital patient or are they going to be treated in a separate manner? I actually don't know the answer to that, James. That's an, uh, an excellent question. Uh, we would be ensuring that our hospital family was aware of uh, whether we had positive patients, whether they come from our region or not, if they were admitted to the hospital. But with respect to reporting, I'm not really sure what Dr. Gardner will be doing with respect to that. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, so moving on, Natalie, I want to talk about uh, services that are available right now at the hospital and, and maybe services that won't be available moving forward. I know through the uh, up and down of lockdowns, there have been services that have been fluctuating um, for obvious reasons, but um, what is available right now? And I guess what isn't available, what could not be available in the near future here? So we have been directed like every other hospital in Ontario to stop any elective surgery and uh, other procedures in the hospital. So only urgent and emergent activities should be occurring. So any patient that has been booked for surgery, please rest assured if your case was being canceled, you will be notified by the hospital. Otherwise, you should continue to come to the hospital for your procedure. Otherwise, what we are doing as of today is stopping all elective and non-emergent urgent surgery. Um, and as I've indicated, um, those patients impacted will have been contacted by their surgeon. Just uh, so people kind of understand how that works, what, what types of surgeries would those include? So if someone was having um, an, an elective procedure, for instance, for um, 
a hernia repair that wasn't urgent, um, et cetera, then they could be delayed for a period of time. The reason why the ministry is asking us to delay these types of surgeries is so that we can free up staff and have them available for the, the, the surgeon volumes that we are expecting to begin uh, even being realized up here in Muskoka this week. Okay. Uh, Natalie, my last question is just, you know, and I've asked this to you, of you before when we've had the opportunity to talk, what is the, I guess, the status of how your nurses and doctors and staff are doing right now? Again, the pressure is on, obviously, um, but, you know, what is the, I guess, emotional state right now? I would say I think our staff are very tired, um, all levels of staff, including our credentialed staff. And I would say our administrative staff is also very tired. Uh, but I have absolute confidence in them that they're ready and they're, they're willing and they're going to be able to uh, adjust and, and provide support to whatever comes our way this week and the weeks ahead, because I do think that things are ramping up. So they're tired, um, but I also believe that they see uh, a light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccinations that are occurring. Now, as the person, finally, as the person who is in charge of all of these personnel and uh, in charge of healthcare services uh, in Muskoka, what is, I guess, the main message that you'd like to give to the people of Muskoka right now? Well, I think we, you need to follow the, the stay home order. Uh, please only go out if, if it's actually really necessary and continue to follow all the guidelines around PPE, physical distancing, etc. cetera. Um, and, and please do get your vaccination when it's your turn to be able to come forward because together we can really stop this, uh, um, this pandemic and hopefully get back to whatever the new normal is going to be down the road.